researchers here at a university in the northwest are on a mission to save rare instruments from all over the world. BBC Six Music presenter Mark Radcliffe takes up the story. This is Aziz Ibrahim, one of Manchester's finest guitarists and composers. He'll be well known to fans of Simply Red, The Stone Roses, Ian Brown and Asia. This is one of his latest compositions, but it's no ordinary piece of music. Aziz has actually incorporated samples of music that have come from the other side of the world, originally played on extremely rare instruments. We'll hear more from Aziz later on, but first, the extraordinary story of how this global sound got here via Preston. These fabulously attired musicians are a local village band from Hebei province in China. These young women live in Bali. This lady is from Cyprus. And these gentlemen are from a remote village in Uganda. They all have one thing in common. They are all playing rare native instruments, which could be lost to world music heritage unless someone records them pretty soon. Happily, a team of researchers at the University of Central Lancashire has done just that. We found through research that there's a lot of instruments that are slowly dying out. Mature villagers are using and creating these instruments, but the younger generation are no longer interacting with them. And we felt that it was really important for us to document some of these instruments, the sounds from these instruments, and to place them in a format where the younger generation would interact with them again. Paresh is one of the three founders of the Global Sound Movement, GSM for short, a project which began back in 2015 with a trip to Africa. We came across uh, an instrument which is dying out across Uganda called um, an akandinda. Right. And we'd found one uh, that belonged to the people of Nashamembe. In order to construct the instrument, a pit's dug in the ground, banana trees line that hole, keys like um, a xylophone yeah. are placed on top. They're tuned with an axe. Right, it doesn't sound easy. Very interesting to watch. And then it's actually such a huge instrument that there's three or four people, depending on the piece of music, on either side. And the pieces are predominantly stories and folklore and traditional pieces. Were people welcoming that, that you were taking an interest in it? Were they keen to show you what they had? Very much so. Everywhere we've been, people have been very welcoming um, and very interested and very helpful. And um, we just wish they'd be a little bit quieter when the uh, red light's on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Bush is the man who has to overcome the problem of noise from over-enthusiastic locals. He spent hours recording not only tunes, but also individual notes from every instrument. Once they've, they've actually built the thing, um, we had to sit through two hours of a performance. Wow. Because it, it is like a ceremony. The patterns are really, really complex, and it's very difficult to uh, get your head around how it all works. How, uh, they were laughing at me, actually, because I was trying to work out what the time signature was. <laughs> we got you fooled, mate. Since the project began, the GSM team of staff and students has visited six countries recording over 70 instruments, some in studio and some on location. And this is Phil Bush and his team down in an underground cavern on Gibraltar on their way to capture some environmental sound, the notes made by stalagmites and stalactites when they're used as percussion instruments. Back in his studio, Phil plays me his own stalag lift music. So this is all this is all natural sounds? You've yeah. not added anything? No, I've I mean, got effects. I'm tweaked a little bit, yeah. but uh, basically raw samples, basically. And here's a tourist attraction which makes its own music. The sea organ of Zadar in Croatia is man-made. Under the steps are a series of pipes which give a unique musical response to the tide and the waves. It sounds like um, monsters of the deep moaning or groaning yeah. or something. But it, it, it does get a bit more excited when the weather gets right. Uh, a okay. Bit rougher. 
and it provides the musical opening for Phil's own composition, using contemporary instruments but utilising sounds from all around the world. The best way to find out how the sounds work within a, uh, a compositional environment, really, is to actually write something with them. Yeah. <laughs> The Global Sound Movement team are not content with simply building a huge archive. They want to use the recordings to help budding composers. There's also the exciting possibility of using virtual reality to learn how to play an endangered instrument. And so I found myself with VR headset and hand controls attempting to play an instrument used by the remote Hani tribe in China and recreated by Yuclan's gaming department. It's a big drum known affectionately as the big drum. Yeah, it's amazing and slightly discombobulating. <laughs> After some success, things went horribly wrong. It's gone minute. It's right down here. It's a right tiny baby drum now. <laughs> oh no, you're stuck, you broke it. I'm bro <laughs> It is right. Still a beta. Yeah. I feel like I've been to space, but I've always wanted to go to space. So, so that, that so that's good. <laughs> the VR initiative also creates the possibility of aspiring musicians being taught remotely by an expert on the other side of the world. But that's one for the future. Back in the here and now, the project is still unearthing more and more instruments to record. I don't think we can see the end of this. Um, it's going to constantly uh, continue. We're going to try and fulfill as many requests as we can. Uh, and what we're trying to do is repurpose it so it's accessible for the younger generation as well through um, players that don't require any musical knowledge as well. The samples are available to buy online with all the money going back to the communities which provided the original music. Already hundreds have been downloaded, some by serious composers. And that brings us neatly back to Aziz Ibrahim, who couldn't contain his excitement when he first encountered the GSM team. My eyes lit up, I was just like, wow, this is exactly what I was looking for. I've spent three years working with the Arts Council, working on identity and heritage and, and music and equalities and things. And then along comes this sample library, which is just the thing that I really needed to further the music that I'm writing. So has this collection and these samples, has that changed the way you play? Absolutely changed the way I play, but I've incorporated that style um, just in the same way that we play the blues. We, we do those things. Now I'm kind of playing like this. <laughs> learning from the samples, and li listening to the players uh, when they play the string instruments or the horn, whichever, and the, my hands move in that way. The fact that they've gone and done this, it's a godsend in a way, you know, uh, really important to me anyway. Most of the instruments that we record will not be here in the next decade or two and we think it's the instruments are so beautiful the sound so incredible they're so important culturally that for us to have an archive of all of these instruments that's accessible for generations to come is just an important thing for all of us How remarkable and well worth preserving some of those sounds well that's it for this week but I'll be back next Monday goodbye next week.